Alright, we're back. It's time for another Minecraft Logic video. This time, topic of the day, delay line memory. This is a bit of an odd kind of memory, and it's very old school, and it hasn't been used in many, many years, but it was very common in early mainframe computers. And if you want to know more about what it was and which systems it was used in and how exactly they set it up, you can check Wikipedia and there's tons of information on it. Basically, the idea here is that you really use a really slow transmission medium, because computers are really usually pretty quick, like they'll switch in, you know, nanoseconds, picoseconds, that kind of stuff. So if you have, like, a long tube, and say it takes you, you know, one second to send a signal from one end of that tube to the other, and then you put a whole bunch of signals in that tube at the same time, you can actually store stuff in that tube, so long as you take whatever you get at the end and you put it back in at the start when you're, you don't want to lose the data. So... What I've got here is this is actually a Minecraft implementation of delay line memory. So how this one works is I'm using a chain of inverters to act as my delay line because torches are kind of slow in Minecraft, and that's good for this situation. So there's just double inverters, and they go all the way down here. They loop around at the end, and then they come all the way back. Now, take a piece of redstone, we connect the start to the end, then what we'll do is that if we send a signal into this loop, then it'll keep looping around without doing anything. So right now, we're storing a 0, or a 1, in that section right there where the torches are dark. And, if I can get the timing right, we can actually store more than one bit there. There we go. So now we got two bits going around. So both of those dark sections could represent, say, a 1. So we're storing bits in this long inverter chain. And so long as you take enough torches to store your bit, it's about 4 or 5 is what you need in Minecraft, then hopefully you won't lose any of these bits. You can just leave them spinning there until you need them, and then you just read them off. Make sure you just read at the right time so that you get the bit you want. So this is great and all, but for it to be useful in Minecraft, it's got to be small. This is not really very small, because if you need four torches to store each bit, then we're taking up a lot of space to store each one of our bits. So I need to make a more compact arrangement for the circuit. That's what we've got over here. So whereas this one is one inverter chain that goes down, and then there's a gap, and then there's another inverter chain that comes back, over here we've got an inverter chain that goes down one side, and it comes back along the top. And then it turns around here, and it goes back along this side. And then it comes back along the bottom and ends up over here. So we're actually going back and forth four times here, and there's not even any gap between these. So we're packing a whole lot more torches into a smaller space here. So if you look, for this array over here, if I send a signal down there... No, oh, didn't quite go. There you go. So it shows up at the other end. And that's pretty long. So that section is longer than this one. It's about a third longer than this one, and it's too wide. This one right here, that torch right there is the output one at the end of the line. If I send a bit into that, it takes at least as long to get to the end of this one. And this thing's a whole lot smaller. So with this kind of arrangement, I can actually store bits in this array, and they don't take up very much space. Whereas a normal... RAM cell that you can read and write to would take up something like 30 or 40 blocks of, it, of uh, surface area, and a read-only bit would take up about 6 blocks of area. These guys actually take up about 8 to 10 blocks of area for a read-write cell, so it's a whole lot smaller than a normal read-write cell, uh, and almost as small as a read-only cell, except the advantage is that you can read and write to them. So that seems pretty good, but there's a couple problems with a design like this. The first of the problems, you can probably guess, is that it takes a long time for a bit to get from one end to the other. And so, let's say you take this arrangement we've got here and you make it four times longer. Then it takes four times longer for a bit to get from one end to the other, and you can only read bits when they get back to the start. So that means that you could be waiting a long time, you know, eight or ten seconds, before the, the loop gets back to the bit you want. So it can take a long time to access the bit you're looking for, and that can be a problem with memory, unless you design around that problem. The other problem, which is a little less obvious, is the fact that normally when you have a redstone circuit that's not doing anything, all the torches are static and nothing's changing and it's not loading down anything very much at all. But, if you have a loop like a delay line here, 
and you're storing a bit in it, that loop just keeps looping and looping, and you've got torches switching all the time. And the more bits you're storing in it, the more torches are switching every t every second. So you fill a room full of these things, and you've got a couple thousand torches switching every second, and pretty soon, whoever's running the Minecraft server you're connecting to is not very happy with you because the server's running really, really slow. So, you might not want to think about using this kind of memory unless you're very careful about where you use it, because while it's very compact for getting a read-write cell, it's a little hard on the uh, on the associated host CPU. Now, if you want to be able to read and write stuff out of this array, you got to know when the bits are at the end of the loop. And the way you do that is with a timing circuit. Now, if you're storing, say, one bit for every five torches, that means that you need something like a five clock to time it so that you are reading and writing everything in sync. So what I've got here is a five clock. It's pretty straightforward. If you want to know more about it, the Minecraft wiki has a bunch of information on five clocks and four clocks and different arrangements that you can use. But this is a nice simple one for our demonstration. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on this five clock. And basically what happens here is that it switches with the same frequency that that your delay line would switch with. So you can use this as, uh, as a timing key to make sure you're reading and writing bits at the right time. Then what you do is you send that signal into a chain of toggle flip-flops which are these guys right here, of which I currently have two. Then if you read the output of those toggle flip-flops, what you'll find is that after delaying the input of the first one so that everything stays synchronized, your first toggle flip-flop switches half as often as your five clock, and your second toggle flip-flop switches half as often as your first toggle flip-flop. If you keep chaining these all the way down, then pretty soon you'll find that you have a system that counts up in binary and then resets and starts over which is basically perfect for keeping track of where you are in a delay line. So, by combining a 5 clock with a few toggle flip-flops and a delay line, you can get a pretty compact piece of memory, so long as you can deal with the fact that it's going to be pretty hard on whoever's hosting the server's processor to do all this constant switching without anything really important going on. And as long as you can deal with the fact that it's probably going to take you 8 or 10 seconds to read or write a bit out of the array. But that's a pretty cool array. Uh, I've decided after testing it not to use it in my Minecraft computer because of those problems. I may at some point extend the design to include a delay line memory, but for the moment it's not really necessary. I don't really need that much memory, and I really don't want to be slowing things down so much. So I'll just kind of remember this design, if I ever need it, I'll, I'll implement it and... Hopefully it will work well for me. But if you can find a use for it, then you're more than welcome to use Stilly Line Memory in, Micro in Minecraft. And I think that's about all I'll show you for now. I've got some other clever stuff, so watch, uh, watch the YouTube channel for some more videos soon. And uh, thanks for watching.